All right, so we're back working on the R5 today. The goal for today is to get it all prepped and ready to go to the machine shop up in Virginia. And to do that, we're gonna have to get all the head studs and this pipe and any of these fittings back here. We gotta get those out of the block so that they can bore it out, hone it, surface the decks, all that good stuff. And I actually got a light installed above my bench today. So that way you guys can kind of see a little better what what I've got going on here. I didn't have very good lighting in the last video. Um, and I will also have a little bit of footage for today's work session. So enjoy that. So to get these head studs off, we're going to have to do the double nut method. And that's where you stick the closed end of the wrench on the stud. And then you stick one nut on with the flange facing up. And then you stick another nut on it on top of that nut with the flange facing down so that you can tighten the nuts against each other. And then you take the wrench and move it up to the, the nut and then you can back the stud out. Uh, normally, head studs will have a, a Allen key provision on the end of them. And these do not for some reason. It makes it so much simpler to take them out, but uh, they should be, shouldn't be that tight, but hopefully they're not loctited in there or something and we can actually get them out so here we go all right now we got our block all taken down no more head studs. Got the, the pipe out up here. Got all the nuts and bolts taken out. Should be ready to go to the machine shop. And there's our finished stash of head studs. Got my list of stuff together that I need to ask about. And yeah, hopefully the next time we see this, we'll be starting to assemble stuff. All right, so it's a couple days after the last video where we left off, and I've already officially gotten the cart ahead of the horse. Uh, I have not taken the, not taken my block up from the machine shop yet. It is still in the garage here in North Carolina. I am trying to get a couple things going in the background uh, while the block is being machined, and realize that I don't have a starting point on piston to valve clearance. So I wanna know where my valve is, particularly on the intake, uh, cause I'm trying to work up a set of pistons for it. And I'd like to know. And while I've got all the pieces here to do it, we're gonna do that today to make sure that we don't have anything hitting. And I know what I can get away with as far as a depth on my intake pocket. And my buddy from Comp Cams actually contacted me the other day about a different project, and I mentioned to him that I had this project going on, but I didn't know what my specs on my camshaft were, and he had told me that they could measure it, and so I'm going to send that off to him, along with the, the valve springs and the keepers and retainers, and he's going to measure the lift, the duration, intake, or the opening and the closing ramps um, and kind of tell me what what he thinks of it and let me know what what kind of shim pack i'm going to need under here because uh, i don't know if they actually changed the valve springs or reshimmed them i i kind of doubt it uh, but so that's also going to be going on in the background too so but i got all the stuff here to measure piston and valve clearance today so we're going to do that and then I'm going to send out some parts. So these are my valve springs. This is the intake and then the exhaust. Uh, they're pretty, they're pretty heavy springs. Uh, I don't think I've seen anything quite like them before. And then these are just the checker springs. They're actually uh, wastegate springs out of my pickup that I am going to use to as a, a light spring to check the valves. The so this is the 
the lock and the retainer for the exhaust valve. These were extremely tight on the on the valve. And if you can see there's a little pitting kind of in underneath the underneath that rib in the lock. That's actually micro welding. So these these locks were actually welded to the valve. And you can see there's a little bit of get the light on it. There's a little bit of welding on the outside of the of the lock too. So these things were on there. I had a or have a air powered spring compressor at work and that that thing didn't hurt, didn't even phase these locks. The springs it could handle, but the the locks were so tight on the on the the actual valve itself, it it couldn't overcome them without some extra some extra uh, force. So, but we did get them off, and so I'm gonna put install my checker springs now, and I gotta put the crankshaft in the block, the camshaft. Uh, piston and a rod, and then head gasket, the head. So, here we go. All right, so this is where we're at now. Um, you just saw me get the belt drive on. That was a little bit of a learning experience in itself. Pretty similar to a timing chain, but still uh, just a little bit different. And now we've got our number eight hole with a piston in it. Uh, you'll see I actually was gonna do number one and then realized how hashed number one was. Uh, the bearing clearance was noticeably you could move the piston up and down in the bore, uh, even with the bearing in there. So that was not going to give us a good measurement. Um, but fortunately, the number eight hole has the same valve pocket layout as number one. And that's the cylinder that I have the valves disassembled on. So that's what we're going to do. I've got the clay in there. Uh, and then we're going to get the head on and tighten it down. Okay, so you just saw me get the head on on the rocker stands, which took a little bit of figuring out because there's actually two different size bolts that go in. Uh, one is, this this one up here is actually a little smaller than the one that goes in the, the exhaust stand. So that took a little bit of figuring out. Uh, got the intake and exhaust rocker on and got them set to zero lash, uh, which is not where they run it, but that is, what we would want to start with uh, checking piston to valve clearance because we know if you open the lash up it's only going to get better from there uh, so this is unless you are negative lash which would mean you're hanging the valve off the seat which makes no sense um, as long as you are zero lash or above uh, that's going to be where you want to measure your piston to valve clearance. Then I think, I don't know what the actual lash spec is. We'll find that out from my engine builder. Um, but we're going to start with zero because that is the tightest 
the valve will ever be to the piston. And you also, if you notice, uh, you might have saw me color the, I forgot the lash cap at first, which is this little puck under here. And that's because the, I believe the intake valve is probably titanium. And they put a hardened steel cap on it too, because the, uh, otherwise the end of the valve would wear out underneath the rocker. And if you saw, I colored actually colored the end of the lash cap to mark or see if we can see where the roller is actually going. Um, and that'll give you a kind of an idea of your valve travel or your rocker travel across the top of the valve. And I'll show you that in a second. Now we're going to roll it over and it'll get a little bit tight where the clay touches on the intake valve. But you'll see there's the exhaust valve, opens, closes, and then there's the intake valve. A little bit tight, but rolls over. So now we should be able to pull our cylinder head off and then measure the clay to see how much clearance we have. Okay, and so here we're, we can see what I was talking about with uh, the Sharpie marks. Uh, something that some people don't actually think about when building an engine or uh, most engine builders are obviously checking this, but the pattern that your rocker makes across the top of the valve um, can be adjusted. And so the, the, the tip of the rocker starts over here and then it moves across the face of the valve and then back as it goes through its up and down cycle. Um, and you can actually move this pattern to the left or the right, uh, but you generally you want it in the center. Um, and you can also, depending on the camshaft, you can adjust the width. And with the shims, you can adjust the width. And it's there's a little more science behind it than I'm going to go into. But um, the exhaust valve actually looks pretty good. It's pretty close to the center. Uh, the intake valve is maybe a little, little bit towards the rocker side more than I'd like um, but that's I just used the shims that were taped to these stands and that I was assuming that is the shims that they were using um, so we can adjust that but now we'll get the head off and then look at the clay all right so we got it measured uh, we've got almost 70 thousandths of piston to valve clearance which is a little on the tight side generally we look for 80 thousandths on the intake and 100 thousandths on the exhaust uh, just for safety but that's that's kind of where I expected it to be uh, and that's with the lash set to zero and the cam not degreed but set to zero on the on the timing marks so that's anything we can kind of predict what will increase or decrease uh, from moving them from that that baseline. So that gives us a place to start and gives me a little bit better idea of what pockets I can run on my the pistons that I'm working up for them. So Okay, so the final thing that I need to get for my friend over at Comp to kind of analyze my cam and spring setup is the installed height for the each of the valve springs. Not each of them, but a general height for the intake and then the exhaust. And you do that using a installed height micrometer, um, putting it basically in place of the valve spring, and it'll measure measure where the retain or the distance between the retainer and the actual seat with the shims that would be put in here. The guy that previously had this it looks like they used just some hardware store washers uh, they're not, and they're not a hardened tool steel or anything so the the valve spring is actually wore the outer valve spring is wore a groove in this thing a pretty substantial groove um, and that's that's not what you want because there's a significant amount of material missing there and that material was probably floating around in the engine somewhere uh Definitely not something that's recommended, so we're going to definitely change that. But I got 
got some measurements taken and I'm going to get that info over to him so we can see what what we need to do with the spring particularly the spring setup um, and if the cam is kind of right for the application um, I don't know like I said I don't know the the lift or the duration on that cam and he should be able to kind of hone in on what where this cam is going to work best at the rpm and yeah so he'll also be able to tell me uh, what what installed height i'm going to need on my springs with the rate that they've got and to kind of help control this thing and the uh, the cam is actually an Arrington cam. It's got an ARE part number on it, but that was not the original cam that would have been in this with when it was at Evernham. Um, and these are Evernham machined heads. What they did with the, all the cup cars, uh, they pair intakes, cylinder heads, and the camshaft together because uh, they, they all work in harmony. And as long as you can buy all of them complete as a package uh usually you you shouldn't miss the mark on what kind of power these sh should in theory make um with the camshaft being uh kind of a mystery that's kind of where i'm i want to get just a little more clarity um and just some professional direction on what we should be doing with that so that's my that's my spiel for today and hopefully get this block shipped off to the machine shop and we'll get to assembling here before too long. So anyway, stay tuned. Side note here that somebody might find interesting. If you'll notice this piston kind of rocks back and forth in the bore quite a bit. Uh, and that's because of the piston to wall clearance is so loose. Uh, they generally run about 10 thousandths piston to wall clearance in a NASCAR engine and which looses fast in their world, uh, meaning that it's better to be a little too loose than a little too tight, um, not get the piston to scuff on the cylinder wall if you get into an overheating problem. Um, we're gonna tighten that up just a little bit because there's no reason for that on the street. We're not running wide open throttle for 100 mi or 500 miles. So we'll, uh, just a couple tweaks that we're going to make uh, to make this thing kind of more of a, a street oriented engine, but should be pretty fun and stay tuned for the next video.